Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lake Erie Regional Great Programs weekly podcast. I'm Jennifer Phillips Russo, Viticulture Extension Specialist, and I'm here today with Kevin Martin, who's our Business Management Specialist. We're here to talk again about the COVID Virus Food Assistant Program 2.0, or CFAP, because it is really important information for all of you out there. I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about it. Okay. Let him tell you. Did you hear that? Absolutely. So <laughs> I think the first thing we want to cover is, you know, why we're here. We just did this CFAP 2 update a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're here for two reasons. The first reason is this is important uh, in the sense that it's one of the more financially important things growers can do this year uh, to improve their profitability. In, in what I mean by that is this is a big program and it's a lot of dollars relative to the, to the size of the farm. Um, so that's, that's one reason why we're here. And the other reason is because we did learn a little bit more about the program since our last update. Um, the nuts and bolts of the program really haven't changed. We knew those last time. Uh, you're going to receive payments on 2019 sales, whether those sales are based on a prior crop year, like 2018 crop, or I don't know, a cash advance for 2020 crop. It doesn't matter as long as they're based on 2019 sales. So that's all information you're going to find on your Schedule F, if you do a Schedule F, or uh, a different tax form if you're a different type of entity. Um, those payments are going to start at 10.6% on the first $50,000 of sales. And they scale down ever so slightly to 9.9 .9 and 9.7. And after 9.7%, it basically, that's, that's going to be where most grape growers are. At, at over $500,000, it goes all the way down to 9%. So a few growers may be in that $500,000 to $1 million range, just the largest ones. And then anything over a million is 88 .8. So essentially everybody's gonna get at least 9% or more. Of what they made last year. Yeah, so this is, and this is an, an important distinction. This is based on gross sales of crop. So if you do a lot of custom harvest, you don't get paid anything for that. If you, um, you know, earned income that wasn't based on sales of grapes, you don't get anything for that. But for up, everything, but for everything that you grow and sold, you get that nine to 10%, regardless of what your expenses look like. This is on gross. So it would behoove even the people who do custom harvesting or the people who they harvest for, they can still apply, correct? Oh yeah, I mean, most of our growers that do custom harvesting generate most of their income from gross sales of grapes. Um, you know, if they do a little corn on the side, they have to subtract that out. CFAP 2 does pay for corn. Corn got paid the first time and CFAP 1, they'll get paid again. But the methodology of payment is different for every crop. So you need your gross sales based on what crop you're growing. It is essentially the same for all of our um, specialty crops. Most of them look like this, except for a few. Um, hops would actually be different. But, uh, but for grapes, it's relatively generous at this 10%. So that's what we'll get. So I have a question about some of our members who actually are winery owners and grow their own grapes and use their grapes. So they're essentially selling to themselves. How does that work? Right. So their numbers are essentially dismissed. You know, they're not really going, going to look at those numbers. And you can find more information about this at farmers.gov slash CFAP or slash CFAP. Um, basically, what they tell you to do is contact your local office. You should probably do that sooner rather than later because if you're a winery, this is going to be a little more complicated. And what you're going to get paid on is the value of the commodity. So the local office is supposed to help you work through what the values of your Chardonnay are or your new RA. Um, if you, you know, and we have some growers that always pay themselves three or $400 a ton for Concord or even 500 and they look at the cost of what it takes to grow and they make sure the vineyard operation is breaking even or making money, uh, regardless of how much they're paying over market. The, so the CFAP 2 payment will not be based on $500 a ton if you're selling it to yourself. Now, if you found a winery that you don't own um, that happened to pay you $500 because, I don't know, let's say you brought them one ton, so it was a big headache. Um, I can't think of another reason why they would have paid you so much in 2019. But if you did, then, it, then you do. You get that payment based on that sale. So you don't have to prove 
that the payments you receive from third parties are fair market value. Okay, you cut out for a little bit. You said you don't have to prove and then you're... Sorry, yeah, a little bit of an internet snafu here, but you don't have to prove that uh, the payments you receive from third parties are of fail, fair market value. That process is really only if you're selling to yourself. Okay. Um, you know, if you have a substantial interest in, in the winery side or whoever is processing the grapes. So uh, basically all, all grape growers, you grow grapes, you look into this program. Yep. All grape growers look into the program. Anybody who grows for a co-op will get paid 100% of what they sold in 2019. So keep that in mind. It's based on your sales of 2019, which can look substantially different than your crop in 2019. So look at your Schedule F. Don't look at your yields and anticipated um, prices. This is not crop insurance. This is more of a direct, sub a direct subsidy. And I do have to tell you, I've been talking to some growers to make sure that so I think this is a really great program. Make sure that they actually have that information and they're aware of it. And I've had one tell me the money's already in the bank. Um, I don't mean to get your hopes up. The, the, the process of applying, if you're a grower that sells to a third party, like to a cooperative, the process of applying is very easy. I do think the payments are going to slow down now that we're uh, two weeks into this program because so many people have already applied. Uh, we've been assured that the budget is there so that they don't think they're going to run out of money. So if that is the case, you'll have until December 12th to finalize the application. So theoretically, you should have some time. But I don't anticipate that there's going to be a one week turnaround from the time you apply to the time the money's in your bank account. But if you did apply early, that is how fast it was getting done. So I also we'll asked, I also asked that grower because I've had some other people ask me, well, what's the catch? What is it go, What's going, is there a hitch to it? Because I think they've been burned maybe on other programs. I'm not entirely certain why they're asking, but so I reached out to that one particular grower and they said, nothing. I have to sign a 1099 afterwards. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing we did learn that, I mean, could be a moderate snafu for, for a small minority of growers is the way they're going to use certificate payments from cooperatives is you will be paid uh, on the certificate that counts as your 2019 sales for the certificate that was issued in 2019. Um, so that will hit different people differently. Um, you know, if you sold certificates, you do not receive a CFAT payment based on the sale of certificates. If you were issued a certificate, you do. Um, so if I think the one snafu would be is if you're just starting out delivering to cooperatives or you recently switched from a cash market to a cooperative, your 2019 sales may be depressed because let's say you only have one payment and a, and a harvest advance and that's all you have. Um, so you're going to get a little burn there and that is unfortunate. The good news is for the large majority of our growers who are not in that situation, you'll be receiving a payment almost based on your average yields and, and proceeds because you'll be receiving payments based on your 2019 sales, which will include payments from the 2019, 18, and potentially even 17 crop, depending on where you deliver your grapes. So I'm really hopeful that for anybody who was truly hit hard by that frost that happened in May on the 8th and 9th and 13th there, that this is going to be helpful for you. So please take advantage right. of this. Yeah. And that's great news for a lot of growers. Uh, these payments are going to be based on 2020 data. So for us in particular, some of our growers 2020 data isn't going to look as great. So for us, we're, we're doing it based on 2019. Uh, you know, I think because that data is available, uh, we don't have 2020 data finalized yet. So that's why they selected 2019. So that, that is definitely good news for us. Um, so to apply, like I said, I, I said you could get more information at farmers.gov. Uh, you can technically apply there depending on how much data FSA already has about you. If you're not experienced with working with FSA, you will definitely have to contact your local office. Uh, anybody can apply by contacting their local office as well. You don't have to apply online. Um, Mr. Martin, do you know yeah. where the FSA offices are located? It doesn't matter. I don't have to tell you because most of them are either closed or open for appointment only. So you're going to have to call first. A little bit of legwork. You got this. <laughs> but yes, I mean, they, they have moved from Jamestown. They were in the extension offices near the uh, Jamestown airport. They're not there anymore. Um, but you cannot, I believe in Chautauqua County, you cannot just show up to the FSA office. So um, 
don't want to confuse anybody, give you that address and just have you show up. But that's my understanding is because of COVID, they are still closed to the public. And I think, I believe they are open by appointment. Nice. But you can contact them and see if that has changed because that, that was evolving. It was up to the local offices. Truly take advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we will be with you next week unless Jennifer has anything else she wants to add and look forward to hearing from you then. Uh, that will be our first podcast basically after harvest. Uh, all the juice grapes should be wrapped up by next Wednesday. So good luck finishing things out and hope, hopefully you get a chance to watch this now or, or early next week as you, as you stop pulling those 90 hour days. Yeah, get some rest <laughs> soon. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.